So my name is Mas Victor. I'm going to talk about uh, trusting humans over machines. So uh, Elon Musk will hate me on this one. Uh, here it is. Perfect. Cool. So basically, this is a story about uh, starting with a PowerPoint and then, of course, ending here doing a PowerPoint presentation or actually doing an enterprise product. So a bit about me. Uh, I'm the design director at uh, Pecan. Um, and Pecan is basically an app that helps you engage your employees so they don't quit their job. And the way that we do that is that we send out surveys to employees. That could be once a week. That's maybe like three questions or once a month if you're make a big organization. We take all those uh, responses anonymously and then make them into a dashboard where you can go in as upper management but also as a team leader to see what are the things in my team that I have to do better to actually improve the engagement in my team. We, of course, then also come up with suggestions for you, like these are the things you should, you should actually do to make your team better. So like have some suggested actions and stuff like that that uh, improves your team. Cool. We do this because we believe that a company like Sendesk and companies in general have been doing amazing stuff in cons uh, <laughs> customer experience, meaning that when you get into a store, you get a good, a good experience, you buy the product, you love that company. And you still have to do that. We kind of believe that that's the past 10 years companies perfecting that, and the next 10 years will be, be about perfecting the employee experience, because if your employee in the store fucking hates the brand that they're working for, they'll give a bad experience to the customer in the end, right? So, this is the story, our road to designing this enterprise software that we have today. So, of course, everybody's like, do you want MVP? <laughs> then you go out to, and of course, everybody starts here. We started here. We started in what we call the dungeon over here, just uh, by the uh, elevator. We were four people uh, on one desk, and every time like, the, uh, the caterer arrived, we have to move all our stuff. But uh, <laughs> we did an MVP, right? But then you go out to big companies, they're like, fuck you. Like, we can't use this at all. Like, uh, why should we trust you that the thing that you built in the dungeon would actually work for my company? But you have to start somewhere, right? And we started right over here with a good guy called Charlie. Mm -hmm. And we sent out, uh, basically, if you know, like SurveyMonkey, we sent out surveys with, the, uh, with that. And then we had Charlie then type up all these PowerPoint presentations. So basically this. So we sent out this to uh, a few of the companies that like, trusted us enough to send out a survey to, to the employees. And then we went back to them with this PowerPoint presentation made by Charlie and be like, do you like the insights here? And the great thing about doing it this way is that, of course, you can prototype very, very quickly. And we found out not only which kind of insights do you want to actually see, but how do we have to present those insights in a way where you actually understand them as a business. Um, and then, of course, the first product we did was like, just put all the graphs on like a page on a website, and then uh, <laughs> that, that'll be great, right? Of course, that didn't work at all. But through iteration on this PowerPoint presentation and putting that into the website, we came to this magnificent beast of a product that you see today. <laughs> so the big learning we had here was that, of course, humans can do more than machines, right? So of course, that Charlie and the entire team sitting there going through the company's data, finding the right insights, writing a PowerPoint presentation is better than just a web product. And our customers knew this, so they were like, we don't want to use a web product, we just want you to come out like every month and do a presentation for us. Of course that's not scalable, right? So at a certain point we have to be like, you can't make this presentation any better, actually you have to scale it back so we can actually get people to use our web product, right? And then slowly we could build our web product up to the standard of our presentation. And then we had another thing, which is like selling to the wrong customers. So in this entire like prototype phase, when you go out and find these customers that you then show the presentation to, how do you know that the thing that they are saying is actually the right thing to listen to? Because in the beginning, of course, we went out to our friends, and our friends have small companies, and they want some big companies they want to talk to us yet, and these small companies then said you have to do this and this and this, and you have to like take a step back and think about, is that the right feedback? Is that the right direction for my company to take? Do I want to sell to small startups that have four employees and then cater all my features to that? And the answer for us was, of course, no. There was a lot of great things in there, but sometimes you just have to cut some of it away and be like, what is my product vision in the long run? Then we get, get to the uh, second stage, like growing out of MVP and then iterating enterprise software. So we did this whole thing, iterating our software for a long time, and then we had a break uh, when I think uh, our, we had one salesman in the company at this point. I think we sat still here, but over on the other side. 
uh, the other building over here, uh, then Gustav, uh, the salesman, sent, I think, 100 emails on LinkedIn uh, to companies in Berlin saying, I'm in Berlin next week, let's meet up. And out of those, we only got one reply. And of course, he wasn't in Berlin, right? So of course, we booked the ticket immediately. And that uh, one reply was from a guy from Delivery Hero that said, like, this sounds interesting, just come over. And because we got that one deal, then we could just leverage that into getting other big brands, as you see here today. But when you sell to these big companies, they're always safety first, right? So if you roll out into a like, 200,000 employee company and you train all the managers in that company, and then the next day we change the entire interface and you just train all of them, that, that HR person will fucking hate you and never work with you again. Um, and that's why traditionally HR uh, companies and enterprise companies in general, they release very, very seldom. So Workday releases two times a year. Us as a startup, we can't do that. Like the market is still evolving. We still have to evolve our software. So we have to release much more often than just two times a year. So the big question here is that, as you see it, how do you keep innovating and iterating a product while you're selling to risk avert cut the customers? And I came up with this uh, framework that we, we use internally and it's not rocket science, but I call it designing in waves and that there's a stupid Kanye West quote at the top. Um, and it basically has three steps. Uh, you add something where it doesn't disturb the customer and the users. Then you test whether that actually works. So a customer says, we need this and this and this. Then we build some of it. Are they actually using it? Are they using it the right way? All those things. And then once in a while, we can bundle stuff up. So of course, if you add a lot of stuff to the product, to a dashboard, then it'll get cluttered over time. And then we need to take a step back and say, OK, with these new features that we've been releasing over the last months or half a year, how can we bundle them in a way that actually makes sense as a uh, holistic experience? <clears throat> Here are some like, very simple examples. Um, so we have this integrations page. This is a bit old screenshot, but you can basically connect to different um, services. And then our development team came to us because a lot of our customers says, we also want like, API access to the data. And how do we actually do that? So they had like, thoughts about we could do an app store down the road and all those things. So they built into our infrastructure to support that. But we didn't know yet if the companies that said they would use the API would actually use it. So instead of using like days and months testing this, like figuring out whether we should do an app store or not, we just did like a new tab with all the all these the components that we already have. This is a very simple example, but this like took 10 minutes to design instead of like spending months trying to figure out how should an app store look. And this is now being used by our customers. And then down the road we can say, okay, how are our customers using those uh, API tokens to actually uh, in their product? Then we can do an app store. The second example here is uh, something that is uh, pretty cool, I think. Um, because we have collected so much data on employees and when they leave and their engagement up to when they leave, we can start doing predictive attrition, which means that we can tell you in your team when people is going to leave. So which team should you focus your engagement uh, efforts on the most? Um, and of course, the most important thing here is that the stuff that we say is actually true and people can believe the insights. So we can't just release this to everybody. So the way we did that is that we kind of hidden it away and then released it to a few customers so we can go out and, go out and say, okay, this is what we found, if, uh, this is what we can predict based on your data. How does that match your experience and the, your, your historical attrition in your company? So you don't want to end up building these like Frankenstein products. I think we all try to use, I think, especially like enterprise software and business software where just like they add stuff all the time because the customer's asking for it, right? And then you end up with this like Frankenstein thing that doesn't work for anybody. So when you do do the, when I say you should do these things, just adding stuff unobtrusively, remember that you have a vision for that, right? So at some point you have to say like, my idea with doing this is doing this later, or my idea with doing this is testing this thing, and then I'm going to take it away so it doesn't work, right? If not, you're going to end up with a shitty product. Um, then the second thing, and this is like very specific for B2B companies, um, where your user is not your user, right? In the beginning, we sold to HR, and everything was fucking great, because we can just call them up and say, you bought this thing, how is everything working? Can you, accept, uh, can you understand the dashboard, all those things? But then we started releasing our dashboard and all the insights to managers. And now 65% of our users are managers, right? And we can't just call out those managers because they didn't buy it. They don't know us. And the company would get pissed if you just called them up. So how do I reach these users? This is a guy from the company. I just left the photo. He's kind of our like ancient aliens guy. Um, 
But this is a real example of me trying to, um, to reach uh, a user. So I wanted to talk to a manager in a big company. So I talked to our customer success department that has the relationship with the HR department and say, which company can I talk to now in their circle of releasing the engagement software and everything that's ready to talk to us? This sends me to an HR manager. This sends me to a regional manager. And this, like, this takes like four or five weeks to get to that, right? And some of them like, don't pan out. So it takes a long time reaching the actual user. So of course, man, just use data. Like if you don't, you can't talk to uh, to people. Just use some data, right? You can just go in and see they click there and they drop up there. But the problem with that is is that data only tells you what people do, not why they do it, right? So you still have to talk to people and actually build a partnership with your customers, right? And we talk a lot about this in uh, in Pecan that it's a partnership with our customers. It's like building trust over a long time. Um, and we see in our NPS comments we get from our from our customers that. The most important thing to them is that, of course, the software is good, but like, the relationship to have with us, with our CS department, with our PMs, with everything, that's the most important thing. So overall, what did we learn or what did I learn? Humans can do more than machines, right? This is kind of like, if you know Paul Graham from Y Combinator, it's just like, do things that don't scale, right? But it's also the, the, the other sense that you have to know when you actually have to stop doing the manual work, right? And it's like that cut point you have to be very, very aware of. You have to think about who your customer really is. Is the feedback you're getting actually valid? Don't be afraid to change. Be aware uh, that you're changing and why you're doing it. But of course, you can change stuff, but be aware. And then partner with your customers. Uh, I think that is like the main point. So through all of this, and if you remember the first slide, that, that, that I showed you with the uh, PowerPoint to enterprise software. We went all through these iterations with the PowerPoint, did the, did the, uh, we, did the web app, sold all these customers. Then uh, I think a year ago, we released a export to PowerPoint feature. <laughs> that was it for me. Thank you so much.